So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at, continue to look at heat and the idea of it and how it's transferred. Though. So we've alluded to it a few times now, but we've talked about how, you know, when you touch an object, it might feel cold, and the other object might not feel cold. Okay, that also do with something called conductivity there. And there are three modes of transportation of heat. We're going to look at all three of those modes today. And okay, we're going to discuss how they work. Your textbook and your most physics books really just touch the surface on this. We're going to go into a little more detail about how it actually works. Okay, because there's actual reasons for stuff. We're going to spend some time looking at a few different computer parts. Isayel and um, Edgar, I think, and Christian came uh, the other day to help me take it apart. So there's a bunch of things in there we want to look at. Um, first of all, first of all, there are three modes of heat flow. The first one, the one that's most common that most people know of, is conduction. Okay, is conduction. Now, for conduction to occur, the first thing you want to write down is this. There has to be contact. Conduction always assumes there's contact. So, for example, there is no heat flow by conduction between my hand and the desk right now. But the minute I touch the desk, now the heat is flowing from my hand into the desk. And that's conduction, because it's touching. Okay, so we have contact. It's so the first thing we always have to know, that there is contact. Okay? <laughs> this occurs when the two objects are at a different temperature. Okay, again, only when there are different temperatures, though. For example, if I took my left hand and my right hand, and they happen to be at the same temperature, which usually they are, and I just put them together, I'm not going to feel a lot of heat flow between them. Okay, because they're at the same temperature right now. So if you take an object that's at the same temperature as you are, so if your hand, say your hand is at like maybe 80 degrees or so, if it's at different temperatures though, yeah, like, do you feel heat flow there at all? Because your hands are, are your hands colder or warmer than hers? Mine's are colder. Hers are colder. So you probably felt heat coming from her hand. Whereas she might not have noticed it, but heat escapes her hand. So try it. I mean, like, try, try touching your hand to something. When it's different temperatures, you'll feel it. When it's the same temperature, you're not going to notice anything. Touch parts of your hand that are the same temperature, you don't feel anything at all. Okay? Um, how come you like the summertime? Yeah, here's a free If you outside and still have anything you want to do, like, you're busy? Well, if, if, you ever, if you ever change something too sudden, you can go into shock. We talked about that last class where if your hands are really cold, you put them in hot water, they can go into shock. It's just a state of, it's like, it's just your body being very overloaded with senses. It, it can't adjust that quick. Like scuba divers, remember we talked about that? Coming up too fast, the pressure difference, they get what's called the bends. Okay, they get these, this problem in their joints a lot for that. So like in their joints, their knees, their ankles everywhere, if they come up with the water too fast, they're going to get that. So whenever there's a two change of a delta of something, whether it's temperature or pressure, you're going to experience some sort of discomfort. Okay? The actual solution to that, that question there, there's probably many answers to that, depending on the scenario. But generally speaking, it's the sudden change that's causing that. So again, conduction is when two objects are in contact. Sorry. I think I have. Thank you for checking. Yes, thank you. So again, conduction, contact, conduction, contact, conduction, contact. You have to have contact here. What's a very, very simple example you might see, besides what we obviously said already, of where you have heat transfer and conduction? Not conduction. That's why she's not touching it. There's something else. We'll talk about that in a minute. Like heat There's other heat there, and we'll talk about that in a minute. If you like touch the box on the hot Yeah, that's the simplest thing. Very good. I mean, has anybody ever accidentally touched the bottom of a pan yes. or touched the side oh, of a pan or iron. touched a burner or something? It hurts, right? Yeah. I mean, it's conduction. My contact, that's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Did you want to say that in conduction? We'll talk about that. 
That's that's even different than what he said. It's three times. It's one of the three. He talked about the other one. We're talking about the first one. Give an example of conduction. Oh, 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 no, 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 I already do that. You can tell that? I don't know. Okay. If this pan or it's not a pan, if this uh, pot, thank you, pots, pans, if this pot is heated up, so for the example here, the actual surface itself is to a certain temperature, you touch it, you'll feel the heat flow. Where is it going to flow from? The pot to your hand. Good. Pot to your hand. So it's hot to cold. So the heat flux, if you want to draw a heat flux here, and heat flux is Q dot. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, that's heat flux. The flux or the change in the heat is coming from the pot to your hand. Okay? Or the pan or whatever the surface might be. If you have a, you know the electric burners that are the coils? Same thing. Those occur through conduction. Conduction between the metal of the burner and the actual pan itself. Okay, see what happens when you put hand sanitizer on the uh, table and you set it on fire? How come it doesn't burn on the table? Because that's different. That has to do with um, you're burning off the apple in the hand sanitizer. It's the same thing as like your child with cologne also. You take like men's cologne and spray it on like a surface and light it, it'll burn right off. It won't burn all water. I'd be careful with that though. You put on something that's flammable, it's not going to not just burn. <laughs> you put, on like, put on like concrete on it, it'll pop it off, you know? Spray a little bit of like axe on the ground and light it real fast. You know, like, you get on the concrete and we'll do it. It's, it's just different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really fun thing. Oil fires are some of the worst ones that can exist. I know, I'm just saying. Like, like, it has to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> fires, <laughs> putting water on fire. All right, now. <laughs> Let's think about this. When will we, when will we, first of all, there's two cases. When will we not have conduction? When will we not have conduction? Star? When it's like, when it can't transfer the heat. Good, so if they're not in what? Contact, good, that's one way. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, everything does transfer heat. It's electricity that has insulators. Yeah, that's what I was talking electricity is like rubbers and insulator, yeah. whereas metal is a conductor. For heat, though, everything will transfer heat. Everything. Um, what else do we have? So not in contact or? State state. Good. State of equilibrium. So if the temperatures of the surfaces are the same. So if for some reason, let's say you take, mm, I don't know, say you're, you know, you're moving, you're building a fire and you take a poker. You know what a poker is? Yeah. The thing that you move the wood around with? And it gets really hot. And if you were able to take that and put it on another surface at the same exact temperature, there would be no heat flow between them. Even though you think there would, right? Oh, this object is so hot. It's given off heat. But if you touch it to another surface that's the exact same temperature, there is no heat flow. So again, the temperature gradient in contact. Okay, those are your two requirements to have conduction. The temperature gradient and contact. You need both of those things to happen. And that's what we said already in the definition, guys. In the definition, we said this occurs when two objects are in contact and at different temperatures. So it's the exact same thing, but just to make sure we're all clear on that. Are you going to have to put a microwave plate? I'll put like a glass plate and a microwave plate. Is that a matter? And I take it out and put water in it. Is what? It broke. Yeah. All right. Well, if you, you're like tempering something there. If you heat something up too fast, its properties start to change and it becomes brittle. And if you start to put something cold in it, it wants to what's called quenching. Quenching metal is heating up really hot. Like, think about when they used to make swords. They would heat up the metal real hot and then put it in water, right? You see all the steam come off? They're quenching the metal to strengthen it. But when you have glass, it has different properties. And its brittle properties are different. So when you put the water in, it quenches, but it's too much for it, so it starts to shatter. That's why they said to have water in your windows and your um, Exactly. Oh. Exactly. I was about to all all these things. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's listen, people. Come on. I don't know what it was. Eventually, warm it up, and the plate broke. And the plate itself broke. Yeah. That might have just been unfortunate for you. I don't know. <laughs> 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 no, 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 I believe you. I believe you. I'm just saying. You, you put it in. You put the soup in the bowl. It was cold or whatever normal temperature. You put it in. It was cold. It was cold. It was cold. Set it up off the bowl. Maybe it was just in there for too long and it got too hot. There's so many different possible answers. It could be the material. It could be there was already a break in it and you just didn't see it on a hairline fracture. There's so many reasons for that. There's something called creep where you have a propagated crack in it. That's a lot more in depth. You're looking at material science there. And it just shattered? Was it still cold when it started to heat it up? Of course. Again, guys, a change in temperature like that that you're noticing is what causes these reactions, whether they're physical or chemical reactions. In that case, it's a physical reaction. Terrence. So now, is it true that hot water never boils? Yeah, like, this, for instance, if I like, what should I like, see if I'm about to make some eggs or something? Not have to, like, I'm about to boil the egg. You're gonna boil something? Okay. And I put the water on hot. And then again, like, then I put that hot water on the, on the burn. Yeah. Why it take long? It, it should, it, it should, I don't know. Theoretically, all right. We haven't gotten to phase changes yet, that's the next topic, but when you put the water on the stove, First of all, you have to get it to heat up to 100 degrees Celsius. And at 100 degrees Celsius when water starts to boil. So if you put it on the stove when it's cold, it's gonna, it should take longer, actually. I'm not sure why you've noticed it the other way. But theoretically, if you put cold water on there, it'll take longer because it's got to heat it up, and then it starts to boil. Whereas if you put hot water, it's already hot. So it only has to heat it up a little bit, and then it'll boil. So that has to do with um, the phase of it. And that, that goes into, if you remember physical science, you have the... Freezing stage, anything less than zero is all frozen. Then you're going to have, so it's going to look like that. Then you're going to have this plateau for a little while. Then it's going to start to increase temperature. Then it's going to change phase. Then it's going to increase temperature. This is the boiling phase. This is the freezing phase. So we're going to go into that next section. Keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah? All right. So that's our conduction. Now, what I want to do next is look at our actual formula for this. Wikipedia? So, if you're in calculus, what do you notice this is right here? A derivative, okay? It's a rate of change. So, all it is, this, this little symbol here, just means that the temperature is going to change. The temperature is going to change. Okay, so the temperature will change. Now, what I want you guys to think about is this. It always does that every time you, every time you go back to another page. If you think about this, guys, if I take a hot surface and I take my finger from, you know, for some reason I'm really stupid, when I touch the surface and I decide to heat there, okay? There's going to be heat flow, right? It's my hand. Second my degree burned. If I take my whole hand, is there going to be more heat flowing in? Because there's more what? More, more contact area or surface area. Very good. So, for conduction, let's write down a few different key points here. If the area increases, if the area increases, Q increases. Q is the amount of heat transferred. And you remember this, physical science and chemistry, Q equals MC delta T. We learned that formula back in the day, last year and in ninth grade. Q is the amount of heat. So it's in joules. It's energy unit. So this is, yeah, we're going we're gonna to write this down here. Okay. Q is the amount of heat in joules. So if the area goes up, or the contact area goes up, then the amount of heat transfer is going up. And just use logic, please. Think about it with yourself. You touch something, a little bit of heat's going to transfer. Put your whole hand on it, a lot of heat's going to transfer. Why does it hurt so much more? 
Was what hurt? It probably hurts the same, actually. It probably hurts more this way. It's that you wouldn't do that. The minute the one finger touches, your nerves are naturally okay, so tell you to pull away. Why when you get a paper cutter, right? Why does that hurt the worst? I don't know. That's not heat. That's just that sucks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Second time, same thing. I don't know. Why, why does it feel like I've hit more than a regular cut? Well, Karen, a paper cut hurts more than like just cutting yourself somewhere else. But if you cut yourself with a knife deep, that's gonna hurt more, obviously, right? Well, I've done it. I cut right into my hand when I was slicing one time. Well, yeah, well, what person put their hand on the knife? I'm just saying. When I was like 12, I was cutting in my dad's deli and slicing it. Oh my god! They hey, fix it. Alright. Hey, we should put him in the house. Father's I gave it the sandwich to my little brother. There. You got a little finger in there. Yeah. 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 I told him it was ketchup. It's alright. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. No. I was actually. You know what I was doing? I was. Uh, <laughs> I was taking a head of lettuce, and if you want to get shredded lettuce, you don't actually shred it. You take a slicer, you just run it over the slicer, and it shreds the lettuce. And you know how lettuce has a very holy, there's like little spots in it, you can kind of like, yeah. it looks like it's a whole head with this little air in it. I was pushing the lettuce, and I forgot to put the guard on, and I was slicing, and I just turned it through my finger. So I came out onto the lettuce. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we threw out the lettuce, so and my finger would be no, 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 All they did was they sewed it back together, and pulled it, and then cauterized it. They, they melted it together. But it looks fine. All you can see is like a white discoloration that's left. It grows back. Well, you slit. You slit your finger. No, you can't numb it, unfortunately. You put in like an enzyme that kind of like made it just burn over, and then they sewed it. It hurt. The guy gave me a loca, but it didn't do much. How that, a local <laughs> anesthesia? How does that work if like, like the bone breaks? Like, it didn't go to the bone. But if it does, like, can't, you can't really they got, it. Well, if you cut your finger off, they can reattach it. Yeah. The bone itself. If you can put the... Like, think about a bone breaking. Doesn't it refuse eventually? Yeah. So if you chop your finger off cleanly, all they have to do is sew and fix all the tendons. That's the hard part. All the tendons and the ligaments and the capillaries. That's the hard part. The, the bone will just fuse back together. It naturally recovers. All right, so that's the first thing, conduction. Now, for this, for this formula, and I'm going to write it down, and this is just, I remember from uh, when I did this in engineering. This is the general formula you're going to see that you're going to see um, for conduction. And let's go over this now. So the amount of heat transferred okay, is a function of three things. First, K. K is called a conductivity factor. Is it constant? No, it changes depending on the material. Right? Very good. Very good. It's a constant for a material, but based on the material, it's a function of that material. So for example, the other day I was discussing with you guys, metal metal versus wood. And when I touched the metal, it felt like it was colder. It's got a higher K value. So all the heat in my hand is running into the metal real fast. But when I touch this piece of wood, wood has a very low K value. So the wood does not take my heat very quickly. So K is your conductivity. If K is higher, more heat can transfer. So for this one, we say also, as K goes up, also Q goes up. Same exact thing. But K and A are very different things. Again, A is the area. A is my area of contact. Whereas K is not my area of contact. So okay. if K does like the same area? They're separate. They're mutually exclusive. They're separate things. Okay? K is based on the material. A is based on the actual product itself. So you get it higher value of the K. Yes. So for example, for example, when I studied thermal fluid systems in engineering, you had K values for things. So when you look at the K value of metal, it's much higher than the K value of wood, and they give you numbers for this. So copper, aluminum, steel, all of them have different values, and they're all determined experimentally. They take a heat flux, they apply it to metal, they see how much heat transfers, and they can determine the K value. Now, here's a tough question for you guys, and this is really, really one of those things you have to think about. Before we get into the other stuff, we're going to continue talking about K. If you look at these windows, they're all double pane. Windows are now double pane. And the way a window works is this. I'm going to look at a profile of the window. You have the classroom is in here. And this is outside. Now, I'm looking, again, I'm looking from the side view of profile. 
So the window is right here. This is the thickness of the window. Then there's another pane in between the window. And then there's the actual window unit. That's what a window looks like from the side. So I'm not looking at a window like, here's not the, imagine this was the window with glass. I'm looking from the side of the window. So I'm seeing the cross section of it. So this is glass. The glass is colored in blue. The question becomes, why do they put air between the glass? So for example here, there's a classroom here, outdoors here. For insulation? There's a glass there. What is it for? For insulation. For insulation. Okay, so when you have, if you just had glass, and you just had a glass surface, and not a double paint, the heat would transfer what? In and out. Yes, much faster in and out. The, the glass, K of glass, is much, much greater than, oh no, whoops, it's this way, sorry. K of glass is far greater than the K value of air. So, if you just had a piece of glass as your window, the heat you would lose would be much faster. You would lose anything. You, if you wanted to heat up the room, the heat would leave, they would leave the room much easier. But because we have this air here, air acts as an insulator, like wood. Like the wood. I don't feel the transfer of heat much, but on the metal, I do feel the transfer of heat. So I would not want something like metal as a window, obviously. Okay? I want to have the air in between it. So the way you draw this, by the way, in engineering, you're going to see, you're going to see a little like, Whenever you see the heat coming like this, then you're going to see a little like squiggly, then you're going to see another squiggly, and then another one. And then you see the heat coming out. And this shows that it's going through three different materials. The heat is coming, assuming we're in the winter, sorry. If we're in the summer, it's the opposite, obviously. If we're in the winter, the heat is going from the classroom through the first piece of glass quickly, very quickly, the heat goes through. But then it gets slowed down a lot in the air. And there's not much left that's going through, and then it goes through the glass again and then it's into the outside. So the air, the air here acts as an insulator. It acts as an insulator. Just like, anybody have a coffee mug with them today? No, or a drink mug of some sort? No, I want to ask them. So, here. There's space between this mug, it looks like it's metal. And you would think, yeah, it's just a metal mug because it actually is a metal material. But in between this metal wall and the inner metal wall, there's air. There's air in it. That's what keeps this cold. I can keep this cold, and no joke, for like eight hours. I'll fill it up in the morning, and at like 5 p.m. I'll still drink it, and it's still cold. Because it's really well insulated. So these walls are not just, you know, walls of a random material. They pick a material that doesn't transfer heat. They pick air. Okay? Plastic works also. And that's why you see like thick plastic cups sometimes. You look at like a plastic mug, and it's pretty thick. That has a tendency to not heat up on the outside of it. Try it sometime, guys. Seriously. Take a hot liquid. Take a hot liquid and be careful. If you have like a metal bowl or something, pour it in a metal bowl. And you'll feel the metal bowl get hot, right? Then pour it in a ceramic bowl. It doesn't heat up as fast. Ceramic is a much lower conductivity level. So air also is a much lower conductivity. So I don't feel, now, tell me, feel the outside of this. Doesn't that feel warm? Because I just put my hands on it for a while. And all the, hair, all the warmth from my hands is going into the metal. But good thing there's air in between the next metal layer. Because the heat that I'm putting into the outer metal layer would go right into the liquid. But because there's air, it's slowing it down. It's not letting as much go through. So when I still drink it later, it's still going to be cold. Okay? Same thing for hot. The same thing, but in the reverse direction. Okay? So I'd rather so I keep food in a ceramic bowl instead of eating in a metal bowl? Yeah, if you don't want that food to get cold like soup, you would want to put it in a ceramic. And what you really want to do to keep food warm is to put like a plate on top there, right? If you're going to eat it later, you put a plate on top. So that the ceramic keeps the heat in. How you heat it up? You can heat it up that way too, but be careful. You don't want to heat up because pressure will build up. You don't have a closed surface. Okay. And that's why you, you never like, you don't ever want to put like a Tupperware in the microwave closed completely and heat it up because eventually it's going to pop up. Pressure builds up. That's why you leave it open. Yeah, that's why you leave it open. Exactly. Uh, the what? Real thick. Sure, there's a top on. I don't know the, the right. I'm thinking about. Yeah. Same thing with metal, guys. You can't put metal in microwave. You know that, right? Yeah. 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 Don't try it. I think it's not good for your microwave. You can break the microwave. That's new radiation. It starts sparking. It's kept doing it. I don't know what You can smell it. I never All right, next. Next. 
Let's throw this again. If K is a bigger value, if the conductivity is high, the heat will transfer faster. If A is a bigger value, if there's more surface area, the heat will transfer faster. Now, this T infinity, anybody remember what I said that was? Good. The environment, we'll call it, or the room, very good, or the outer temperature. So the temperature of the environment. It's always represented as, represented as, represented by T infinity. Yeah. This is the temperature of the surface. Okay. Now, in conductivity, though, in conductivity, there is no environment and there is no real surface. They're both surfaces, aren't they? Think about conductivity for a second. This board has a certain temperature to it. My hand has a certain temperature. My hand is warmer than the board, thus there's heat flowing into the board. So T is like my hand, and T infinity is like the board. It really does not matter for conductivity that we call this T infinity. We could simply call this, if you would like to, and it's up to you guys, whatever you want to do, call this T1 and T2. T1 being the first surface, T2 being the second surface. Because remember, there's always two surfaces because they're in contact. In the next type of heat transfer, there's only going to be one surface. That's why it's different. So if you want to just call this surface 1 and surface 2, you can call it that also. It doesn't matter. As long as you know that you're looking at the temperature difference. Temperature difference. Okay. You, can't have, you can't have negative temperature. You could technically if you just switch the order. <laughs> it just means the heat is flowing in the opposite direction. So for example, if my hand is 100 degrees, and the board is 80 degrees, what's the temperature difference? 20. 20. Is it negative or positive? It doesn't really matter. All I have to know physically is that the heat's going into the board. Okay? Other than the K value be negative? No. No. You can't have negative conductivity. Yeah. You can't even be zero technically. Everything has a K value. Even the, even the best insulators have a K value. It's like 0.001 or something, but there is a K value. Okay? Whereas electricity is different. Electricity, K is conductivity also. But for electricity, if you have rubber, no electricity is flowing through it, and K is zero. Okay? Or it's so low, it's infinitely small, infinitesimally small. All right, now, another way to see this, another way to see this, whenever you see T1 minus T2, what is that really called? In delta. Delta, very good, very good. So this is really Ka delta T. Okay, it's the same thing, just so you're, you're familiar with it. K A delta T or K A T1 minus T2, it's the same thing. Delta means change. We're looking at the change between the surfaces. So if I gave you the K value, if I gave you the A value and the delta T's, you could find the Q value easily, right? And we got to know our relationships here. So as the temperature, as the delta T value goes up, the third thing we should write down. So again, just to reiterate. As, as delta T goes up, Q also goes up. Again, and think about it logically, if you've got two surfaces that are at the same temperature, there's not going to be any flow. But as those two surfaces get different temperatures, like your hand on the burner, the, the temperature of that burner is a few hundred degrees. Your hand is not even near that. Why do you, why do you jump back so fast? Because there's so much energy flowing through your hand because the delta T value has gone up. Again, if it's, a, if it's a surface that's really hot in your hand, your hand is cool. The surface is really hot. So that delta T value between your hand and the surface is very large. There's a very big gap between the temperatures. So when you touch it, you naturally react and pull back because you're feeling a lot of heat, which sends a, a, sends a signal into your nervous system and tells your brain, move your hand. That's why when people are on drugs, like things like LSD and those drugs that alter your nervous system, why do you think they do stuff? Why do you think they die and they end up burning themselves and killing themselves? Because they don't feel the reaction. There are, there are many people that have killed themselves from things like drugs where, you know, they're touching a surface that's so hot, they'll melt their hand right off without even feeling it. Isn't that kind of scary to think about? That a drug can alter your mind and your nervous system? In other words, so much that you wouldn't feel that? While you are, but over time it has other effects on you, sure. There's but that kind of instance would be while you are, which is really not safe. I mean, you guys hear stories of people peeling their own skin off? You heard that before? I looked it up. Where have you not? You gotta take some drug education courses. This stuff's real bad. There's a guy who did acid in like the 60s that thought he was an orange. 
Oh, look, it's funny at first, and then he took a knife and peeled himself. He <laughs> peeled all his skin off. Oh, yeah. It's pretty scary stuff. It's not, you know. What about people? Oh, that's like, yeah, it's inhaled. People, they huff. They huff. Sniff. Oh, All right, next. So our first type was conduction. Okay. Now these words are very similar, guys. Please don't confuse them. The words are similar. The last word was conduction. This word is now convection. Very different words, but they look similar. So please make sure you don't misconstrue them. Now, first of all, first of all, convection, convection. Yeah. Raise your hand. Tell me where you've heard of that before. Hold on one sec. What? No, she's in where have we heard convection before? Yeah. Raise your hand if you've heard it. If you haven't, it's fine. I can go over where it's very simple. Is it science? I don't see any hands up. Isn't that funny? Isn't it like giving up? Isn't it what? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but where have you heard it before? Where have you heard it? Science, okay. Thank you. Microwave or oven. Convection oven. Convection oven. Have you guys ever, you know, have the old school ovens, like the ones you can make brownies in, like nice. to make out of like oh, oh, easy bake. Easy bake. Yeah. 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 They're just convection. Yeah. Yeah. It's a light bulb. Yeah. yeah. So bad. Me, you guys, have I showed you the pictures of the oven I made when I was camping? You can make your own oven out of like cardboard. Give me two seconds, I'll show you. I'll give you five seconds. Sit down. So, um, if you ever, like, for example, so you like to go camping and stuff, or you're outdoors, you want to make an oven. What we did was actually pretty simple. Um, take a box, we open the whole box up, okay? We line the entire box with heavy duty tin foil. So, all this in interior of the entire car cardboard box was covered in tin foil. Closed it up, sealed it, then went to the side of the box and punched out like different holes. Took a pocket knife, no, actually cut it out. So you have now flaps. So these are three levels of your oven. And in each of these, we just took, you know, like wire hangers, like wire coat hangers. We bent them open, straightened them out, and put them across so you had wire hangers there. Now, if you heat up enough coal, all we did was put coal at the bottom. And the thing was, the coal on the bottom produced enough heat. And because there was, um, it was lined with aluminum foil, it actually provided what's called radiation, which is our next topic we're going to look at, or a third type of uh, third type of heat transfer. Now, within there, though, when you close this, convection begins, and it starts to have airflow. So there's hot coals on the bottom, which wants to like start to move up because hot air moves up. So you get these little flow patterns, and that's what convection really is. So you know, you simply line the whole thing with tin foil, close it up, and then run, you know, maybe I don't know, a pile of coals about this big at the bottom. It cooked like eggs, it cooked a chicken, 
We cook bacon. I mean, sausage. There's some sausage close up somewhere. My computer's slowing down, so I'm not going to pull up pictures. Guys, you can't all talk at the same time. Come on. I see one hand, you're all talking. Because I can't hear you. That's why not. But why did not burn? Like, how did the coal not burn the cargo box? It was lined with heavy duty timber. It works, Kenny. Try it. Did it cook well? They yeah, like cook, cooked eggs and stuff, scrambled eggs and bacon and stuff. You gotta, you gotta put it on the tray, close it, open the flap, take a look at every once in a while. We just let it cook on the surface. Very, it was very simple. Okay. I, people are Boy Scouts, that you're doing Boy Scouts, this kind of stuff. No, no. Uh, I'd be careful. I'm not going to much credit, though, no. But I, I, I mean, I'd be careful doing that. <laughs> so if I was to go to somebody's house, do people notice I'm ignoring them yet or no? You guys notice I'm ignoring you when you all talk like that a lot? I mean, come on, this is getting absurd. Why is this not working? All right, so for convection, let's talk because it's clear that I'm working. For convection, you have some sort of a fluid or a gas or a liquid flowing that is going to be the thing that cools or heats something up. Now, if, if you're looking at an oven like convection oven, the fluid that's moving is just the gas that's in there. A lot of people use convection for other applications. One of the most useful ones to use convection for is for computer technology. So if you have a, a surface that's heating up a lot, so the surface is getting really hot and you want to cool it down, so you would run like really cool liquid nitrogen over the surface. So you run an actual fluid or a liquid over at that time. Whereas sometimes you see convection where it's a gas, where it's actually flowing. So convection, the whole idea is that you have fluid flow. You should write this down because I'm not writing this guys. Smart board's clear now. So for convection, you have a fluid flow. You have a fluid flow. Fluids do come into play here, yeah. Fluid, that's no. liquid, right? Fluid is either a liquid or a gas. A liquid or a gas, okay? Now, the part about the fluid that really matters here is several things first. There's a value called the H value. The H value has to do with the, it's called the convection coefficient. There's an H value. Um, you're still going to have, I can't use a smart board, I was going to bring this up. You're still going to have a delta T value in there. You're still going to have the delta T value. So for example, the surface is really you know, cold, but then the surrounding air is much colder or much, much hotter, it's going to heat up that surface and vice versa. So if the surface is really hot, and you blow air over it, why does it cool it down? That's convection. Like, have you ever burnt your hand you like this? Besides putting it in water, obviously? You're cooling it down by convection. Yeah. If it's too hot, no, because then you'll go to the shower, yeah, as we talked about yesterday. So in certain instances, you're going to use convection as opposed to conduction. Now, the thing I want to show you today is where the two of these are used together. Okay? So, the other day I asked the guys to take apart my computer, so they came in to do it. So this is just my old computer, okay? So it's in a bunch of different pieces. So if you look in the inside of it, you're going to notice that there is a... So... What you're going to see inside of your computer here. Um, here's what's happening, just to show, to show how it's going to work. On your computer, on your computer, there's something called the CPU. Okay, the central processing unit. Now, the CPU, the CPU is located underneath here. It is the CPU disk or the CPU chip, rather. It's right underneath here. I don't need this location. I don't, I'm going to call it a heat sink in a minute. I'm going to use that term. Now, the way it works is this. All the heat builds up right here. There's not a lot of heat in other spots. So, like, your hard drive is over... She took the hard drive. Yeah, where'd it go? Okay. Took it. The hard drive is <laughs> over here. <laughs> the hard drive, it's an old computer. I'm not going to use it. 
the uh, check in the 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 check in so, your hard drive is here, your CPU is over here. Underneath your CPU, or underneath your heat sink is your CPU, where all your heat builds up. So, whenever your heat, whenever your computer, like it's really hot, it's going to get hot under that area first. Now, it takes what's called a heat pipe. This structure right here is a heat pipe. To say I was going to detach it, so just unscrew this. So, the heat pipe, is it going to fit or not? Really? He's a showgirl. Anybody have a Swiss Army? I definitely want to. Top right drawer of my desk. No, second drawer of my desk. On the right side. Okay. Phillips have screwdriver. There's two of them in there. Get them both. I don't know which one it is. Okay. So he's gonna come back up. We'll take it apart. Let me explain how it works. So if you look at the side of your computer over here, these are your fan ducts. Okay. This is where the fan is located. This is the actual fan. The fan will spin if I. See the fan spinning? No. Watch again. Oh, oh I see. Okay. <sighs> see, the fan isn't there. Watch what's going to happen. And watch it. Still spinning and then it stops. Okay, there's a fan in there. Now, the way it works is the heat is taken by conduction because it's in contact. This heat sink right here is touching the CPU. The conduction of heat. The conduction of heat <laughs> flows through the heat pipe. It's not funny, guys. Come on, get the thing, pick it up, let's go. The conduction of heat flows through the heat pipe. Some of the heat comes off of this unit. We were trying to figure out why that is the other day. We don't know. The CPU is really here. So the heat comes off the heat pipe. It goes into this portion right here, which is called the heat sink. The heat sink is shaped with a bunch of fins. And once we once this out, comes back, I'll show you. See all these little metal pieces here? You know, there's like a little bunch of metal ridges. They're called fins. They increase the surface area. And remember, as the surface area increases, more heat can be flown off. So all the surface area is increased here. So there's a lot of heat on each of these surface areas. And then the fan blows it off there. So for each of these, the smaller of the two, for each of these two things, the, the heat sink is going to provide what's called uh, a heat transfer in it. So, once I get this small thing, it's not working. No. No. Okay. Now I want the hard drive anymore. The hard drive is better than the other So. This is the CPU right here on the computer. Shame. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, James. This piece here is what's touching it. So this is in contact with the CPU right here. Okay, it's in contact with it. Now they put a bonding agent on here. See that little gray stuff? Yeah. Just to keep the surfaces in contact so they're touching. The bonding agent is a material that has a very high conductivity, so that heat can flow through here. So all the heat that's building up in your processor flows into here. It flows through this pipe, and then it flows into all these pin fins, or these fins. If you look at them, they're all fins along the way. It looks like, almost like a um, fish. Oh, fish. Oh. <laughs> up, you've seen this before, where you see all these, like, all these little uh, ridges? Oh, AC fans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at like an air conditioning unit, you'll see them there. Yeah, if you open up a, you know, open up a radio, you'll see them there also. What about those things to show you the flow of that air? Yeah. yeah, same idea. We'll explain that in a minute. Absolutely. That's, That's a good one. That's convection. Hold that thought, okay? So, from this part, there's a lot of heat build up in this metal piece, in the copper. You see the copper on here? Yeah, copper is the copper color. So, the heat flows from the CPU into the metal, into these fins. Then the fan is what blows air across the fins by a mode of convection. So, you have conduction, which goes from the CPU into the metal, through the metal into the fins. Then to cool off the fins, the fan blows air over those fins. And there's a lot of surface area there. So as the surface area increases, the heat transfer also increases, as we said a minute ago, for contact and for convection. So you're going to see that there's conduction through the metal and convection over these fins. If your fan goes out, what's going to happen? 
It's just going to build up heat continuously. It's, I mean, eventually it could fail, obviously, in some me method. But it's just going to sit here and build up heat more and more and more the whole way. And it's eventually going to fail. It's going to overheat. So if your fan breaks, you've got to make sure it's working. Now, when you have a fan, make sure you clean it. Like, I didn't clean this that well beforehand. All that dust went around. There's a lot of dust all in here. That slows down your fan. Like, I can actually touch the fan and spin it. Can you see that? Okay, but a lot of heat is going to build up in there. Um, Let's see, what else? No, we took out a lot of parts of the day. So it's not going to continue to work. But like, Edgar took out the screen. The screen was I had the screen. Screen. The screen. What is it? What is it? A screen? It's an LCD. Look at this. It's like a regular. It's just a. Uh, it's, guys, this is broke. It's been broken for like a year or two. I used it for parts. Um, so the screen is, yeah, liquid crystal display. It's like a, um, there's a, excuse me, crack. Nothing's going to be mad Liquid crystal. It's solid. It's not an actual liquid. On the surface, it acts. I don't know too much about it. I don't know what you mean. Break it? Yes, Mr. Smith. Look at this. Remember crack? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. I mean, those are CRTs, though. It's different. Pick one of the stuff? Yeah. yeah. There's like an image that's being projected and stuff. It's a little bit different that way. Yeah. Did this thing unfreeze or no? No, it did. Like, still not even, the, not even here. Right, let's try this. Huh? It's a transfer which is radiation. <coughs> what you see with the sun, with all these lights, think of a radiation. Okay, microwaves, x-rays, you know what you're about to Radiation, okay? We'll talk more about that. Yeah, but hold on, he doesn't see that. I'm just trying to close this. Oh,